kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer. We have a brand new old episode of Turn Back to You today. Then we have Ryan Kay with the story on the movie West Side Story. And to end the show, we have another episode of Sports Desk with Andrew Reynolds. All that and more coming up in today's episode of Flyer News. We see crazy things like Good morning, FHS. Today is Tuesday, November 30th, with periods running CBE. I'm Jackson Zweil. And I'm Zach Steiglitz. Hey, Jackson, if you could watch a movie, I mean, if you could watch anything, what would you watch? I would watch Old Flyer News. Well, we have that. So let's take it back to the latest Turn Back Tuesday. Good morning, FHS, and welcome back to Flyer News. It is officially 2017. Why? CTSEXP here. My name is Juanico. Are you joking me? We're going to grow this channel to the top. Jenkins, get off your phone. I lost something right there. A chicken sandwich. That's really good. I don't even make a ton of videos because I'm still small. I can't do this. I can't do this, man. I can't do this anymore. I have to get out. No, I have to get out. Move. I have to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like, drop a comment, make sure... Everyone, um, during quarantine, you've probably used TikTok, and the most famous TikToker, Charlie D'Amelio, but if you have not heard of her, let's take a quick look at some of her videos. As you see, she features Dunkin' Donuts quite a lot in her videos, and that is why she has a drink a Dunkin' Oats named after her called the Charlie. And that's what we're going to be trying out in today's video. I was wondering if you have the Charlie. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, let's try it out. Yeah, I definitely see the milk and you can really taste the caramel. It's, really, it's quite sweet for what I usually have, but tastes really good and it's definitely worth the hype. So for those of you that don't know, Charlie is a 16 year old girl from Connecticut and she currently has over 80 million followers on TikTok, showing the power that social media can have, especially getting a drink named after you. But yeah, that's all I have for Flyer News. My name is J.F. Hall. Let's send it right back to the anchors. I always enjoy looking at history. In other news, Japan recently added $6.75 billion to their annual budget. Their budget, that is breaking records, had a lofty increase because they are in a rush to bolster air and maritime defenses as Japan becomes more concerned about threats posed from North Korea and China. On Friday, Prime Minister Furumo Kishida's government approved it as an outlay of part of a supplementary budget. Additions to the defense budget are not common, but the 774 billion yen is the largest amount to be approved, according to the Japan's Ministry of Defense. As security environment around Japan worsens at unprecedented speed, our urgent task is to accelerate the implementation of various projects, the defense minister he said. In its spending proposal, the new flow of cash will allow Japan to be three months earlier than planned to upgrade surface-to-air missile launchers on islands at the edge of East China Sea, Patriot Pac-3 missile batteries elsewhere. These defenses are the last line of defense that can protect Japan from incoming threats from North Korean warheads. The extra spending will also let Japan more quickly acquire submarine missiles, maritime patrol planes, and military cargo dumps, the defense minister he said. Now to Jackson. Thanks, Zach. Framingham recently joined the MBTA Youth Pass program. This allows people who live in Framingham and are between the ages of 18 and 25 and are a part of a Youth Pass partner program, such as Mass Health. Students who are between the ages of 12 and 17 are also eligible if they are unable to get a student Charlie card through their middle or high school. 
these passes are worth $30 for a monthly link pass versus the $90 for a regular Charlie card. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about how movies delayed due to COVID are getting finally released. Me too. Do you know what's coming out in the next few weeks? Yes, yeah, Steven Spielberg's remake of West Side Story is being released soon. For more on that, here's Ryan Kish. Recently, Steven Spielberg, a filmmaker who has won three Oscars during his long career of revolutionizing people's views of movies, decided to attempt remaking West Side Story, a popular musical from 1961. This was the first time that Spielberg had ever made the choice to tackle a musical. In 1957, when it was first released, West Side Story was created by Stephen Sondheim and Leonard Bernstein as a Broadway stage production. The huge success of the production led to the release of a feature film adaptation in 1961, which was directed by Robert Wise and Jeremy Robbins. <laughs> Because of how highly respected this film became, winning 10 Oscars during its lifetime, creating a remake was considered to be a difficult task that some people even deemed to be unnecessary. Despite this, Spielberg's vast experience, along with his love of West Side Story since childhood, made him the perfect candidate to take on this enormous challenge. For Flyer News, I'm Ryan Kish. Let's take it back to the desk. Thanks, Ryan. There are so many movies to be excited for, and that's just one of many. Sometimes, though, I think sports are just as exciting as movies. Jackson, I hope after that episode yesterday, you're better up to date on sports. Flyer sports, yes, but I want to hear more about Boston sports. Well, then, here's Andrew Reynolds with a new episode of Sports Desk. <laughs> Andrew Reynolds, let's start off with the Pats, the Patriots. Six weeks ago, we're looking at a repeat of last year's disappointing season. Six weeks later, we are looking at a team who just beat the number one team in the AFC. Take that number one team in the AFC with a grain of salt, though, as the Titans were missing their top three offensive names in the matchup. The biggest being Derrick Henry, who was out for the rest of the, season, uh, rest of the year, followed by Julio Jones with a hamstring injury, and A.J. Brown, the Pats, currently on a six-game winning streak, and in that period, they have outscored the opponents 211-63, to 63, which is absolutely incredible. Mac Jones is 100% a rookie year of the year contender. Moving on to the game, the Titans started off the game with the ball. Matthew Judon came up with a huge sack to make the Titans go 3-0 and out on their opening drive. The Patriots capitalized on the ensuing drive when Mac Jones found Kendrick Bourne in the end zone to give the Pats a 7 to nothing lead to start the second quarter. Ryan Tannehill finds Nick Westbrook at the two-yard line after a challenge by now former Patriot and head coach of the Titans, Nick Rabel. The Titans were able to connect on the, uh, the – actually, sorry. Uh, Randy Bullock hit the post on the PAT, which the Pats ended up getting uh, gaining from that and leading 7-7-6. Seven to seven to six. The Pats respond big with a catch by Jacoby Myers to put the Pats in midfield. Unfortunately, the Pats would have to settle for a field goal and would also tack on another one three minutes later. The Titans trying to generate some offense just before the end of the half, but the Pats def defense came up big, poking the ball loose and recovering the one of the three fumbles on the day. The Pats were, un were able to get another field goal to give the Pats the two-score lead, and the Titans needed to really generate something big on offense to keep them in this game, and so they did with a 68-yard run into the end zone. This put the Titans right back in the game. The Pats, with 38 seconds left, were looking for a field goal just before the half, but Nick Folk missed just short, wide of the uprights. And the Pats did receive the ball to start the second half, but had to settle yet again with a field goal. Titans on the answering drive get another huge run play with a 40-yard run, but is poked free. Uh, number two on the Pats picks that up just before it rolls out of bounds. In response, this time the Pats did not need to settle for another Nick Folk kick, but instead received a huge sideline run effort by Kendrick Bourne, which gave the Pats a 26-13 lead. 
Three minutes into the fourth quarter, the Titans are in a fourth and goal situation, but Tannehill gets picked off in the end zone by J.C. Jackson. The Patriots have to settle for their fifth field goal on the day with six minutes left in regulation. And two minutes later, Damian Harris takes it downtown to give the Pats the whopping 36-13 lead. And that was the final for that game. Huge game for Mac Jones and just a poor performance by the Titans. Four turnovers on the day versus the Patriots, zero. Next week is a huge game for the Pats. Monday Night Football versus the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. This game will determine the top seed in the AFC East and could help the Pats if they needed a tiebreaker for first place. This may be the most highly anticipated Monday night football game since the Rams versus Chiefs two years ago, where the game between two, the two uh, at the time were both Super Bowl contenders, became the highest ever scoring game in NFL history with a total of 105 points, and the Rams taking the W 54-51. to Definitely a game to look forward to in Week 13. Now on to the Bees. They currently sit 5th in the Atlantic and are 11 Seven and zero oh overall. More recently, they are two two and one in their last three games. On Wednesday night, they obliterated the Savers with a final score of fifty one five to one. Then on Friday, they lost to the Rangers with a final of five to two. And finally, Sunday night was the 2011 Stanley Cup Finals rematch, to, where the Bees came up on top with a final of three to two. Moving on from the ice to the court, the Celtics continue to struggle, falling uh, one and two in their last three games. On Wednesday, they lost to the Nets with a final of 123-104. to Then on Friday, they lost to the Spurs with a final of 96-88. to But on Sunday night, they beat the Raptors 109-97. to That is all for Sports Desk this week. Reporting for Flyer News, I'm Andrew Reynolds, and that's a wrap. Unfortunately, that's all we have for this episode of Flyer News. You can rewatch this broadcast at 5 and 7 o'clock on channels 8 Comcast, 15 RCM, or Verizon Fios. Or on our YouTube channel, or under the FEC TV tab on the school's website. I'm Jackson Zweil. And I'm Zach Steiglitz. Don't go anywhere. We have a brand new episode of The Early Bird hosted by Griffin Yarmolov. And Shea Curry. Have a great day, Flyers. Flyers.